for the next inside session agriculture and food i like to call upon moderator mr sushant from caspian depth yashra jashwarala from algae depth siddharth manwati from clear meat shrivatsa from trace x jashveer singh from sensi tau shajesh from cjam yeah. hi everyone good morning uh, and thanks narsi uh, for inviting us uh, for this panel uh, before we start the discussion uh, i must apologize for this all men panel as we call it a menel there were some last minute changes uh, and we just couldn't avoid uh, right so sorry for that uh, what i would like to begin with uh, is a brief introduction of all of us so that the audience knows uh, uh, what we do and it makes it just more easier for networking uh, so quick introduction of mine uh, i'm sushant bhatia i uh, work with the debt fund called caspian debt we provide uh, customized debt capital to uh, multiple impact sectors uh, sectors food food and agri uh, climate wash education and health these are some of our focus uh, uh, sectors uh, i would request uh, uh, shrivatsan uh, uh, and then in that order uh, people to talk about their venture and also mention how it is helping decarbonize uh, 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 right yes yeah, yeah. yeah hi firstly thank you so much for having me here uh, very honored to be here amongst uh, uh, india's leading uh folks that are working in the in the climate change area uh, i'm shrivatsa i'm the co-founder and ceo at tracex we are an agri tech uh, slash food tech uh, startup based uh, in bangalore we are about 3 year old what we are solving for is the need for transparency in food and agri supply chains one is uh, building um, a network of supply chain partners where data from one participant in the supply chain to the other either upstream or downstream can seamlessly flows and therefore there is a um, transparent exchange of the information uh, data that that happens uh, that's one uh, with respect to food and what we also solving together with that which we see as a natural extension of uh, uh, digitization agriculture is about uh, helping organizations verify the claims that they make on sustainability be it uh, uh, carbon accounting or uh, be it in the space of uh, uh sequestering the carbon soil carbon uh, that's what we do i will hand over the mic to the other members i know it's just 30 minutes i'll come back and talk more about our organization in the next round thank you uh hi i am jasveer uh i am the founder of sensit out uh, which is uh, you know overlap of uh, agri tech water tech and climate tech uh what we do is we have an iot based uh, system to uh, uh for smart irrigation so uh, if i have to uh, tell you in short if uh, you you might know that uh, farmers for currently farmers for for them what is automation for irrigation is that electricity come for 8 hours they have a very small device called auto switch they place it at the farm so when the electricity comes the pump turns on and uh, it shuts off when the electricity goes off so they irrigate for 8 hours electricity wasted water wasted so uh, with with our devices uh, what we are uh, doing is we are automating the uh, pump as well as walls at the farm with through the help of mo mobile phone they can control uh, for convenience saving time and effort and going one step further uh, we have sensors in the field that, uh, which monitor the root zone soil moisture uh, with that it helps uh, uh, saving about 80% of water as compared to a parallel uh, drip irrigation system so potentially so uh, that's what we do i'll pass it on uh, hello everyone i am srajesh from cjem uh, cjem is an initiative is a not for profit initiative trying to leverage climate financing uh, for small holders for them to transition towards agroecological practices as uh, our previous panel was rightly pointing out uh, agriculture is a guzzler of water agriculture is the you know highest Uh, emitter in as an industry the move towards regenerative agriculture cuts down emission from the ecosystem as a whole and also provides uh, soil organic carbon sequestration up to a tune of uh, 10 to 4 tons per acre per year and uh, a water saving of around 20 to 
30% depending on the context and the crop of the intensity. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I will be just giving you an irony. I come from a totally different background as compared to all these people sitting here. But parallelly, this is one of the first session in my history of entrepreneurship that I have seen people from multiple uh, perspectives, people from multiple visions for, for finding the right carbon em emission solutions are working hand in hand or are at the same podium. So hi, myself Siddharth. I am the co-founder at Clear Meat and we are India's first ISO certified lab-grown meat company which is f focused on providing sustainable solutions for the meat, uh, food industry. And lab-grown meat, that is lab-cultured meat, is one of our initiatives. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thanks, everyone. I would like to, uh, you know, start with Siddharth uh, uh, once. And first thing I want to understand is, are consumers paying for climate? Consumers, if you talk about Indian consumers, no. And if you talk about global consumers, they may be. So, uh, yes, but uh, everyone out there, be it uh, VCs or be it companies like us or companies who are into this domain, they are trying to make the right noise within the con community so that consumers become aware. For From a food perspective, what we have realized that for any food or for any uh, material to get accepted within the community, there are four major pillars to it. One is the taste, second is the texture, third is the smell, and fourth is the price. So if you look at it carefully, the sustainability part never comes in the thought process of the consumer. And what we believe, especially at Clear Meat, we have seen that the whole sustainability concept that has arisen specifically uh, post-COVID is because of the social stigma that is, uh, that is out there. And uh, people are becoming aware, but specifically the millennials are becoming aware of it. And we believe they would be the right trend changer for uh, acceptance. Uh, thanks, that. So I would come to Sujesh with a different question. I want to know from Jasveer uh, uh, once on his experience. Same question. Uh, what is your pitch to customers and does it at all include uh, uh, climate or sustainability? Uh, we do talk about climate. We, we, we talk about how climate change is uh, affecting, you know, uh, is creating more and more drought as well as flood-like conditions. And uh, if you see fl flood is only for a very smaller time, but droughts are predominant. So uh, yeah, we do include it in our pitch, but we also see that for them to accept is going to be, be a little more, I mean, the adaption rates are going to change uh, with the climate pitch in coming years. Uh, we, we have seen the inclination for sure. But currently, our pitch is generally, uh, you know, we are trying to say that for, for us, the first connect has always been that their time is saved. Uh, their convenience is there. A lot of farmers have to actually, uh, you know, synchronize their visit to the farm, uh, saying that we would go uh, uh, when the electricity is available to turn on or off the walls. Uh, but a lot of, uh, you know, people in, in general uh, talk about how farmers are lazy and uh, what they don't want to go to the farm or, or uh, such questions are asked. But uh, let me tell you, they are uh, uh, they they want to, but you know they, there is a limitation that only when electricity is there, and sometimes the electricity comes at night times, and they have to go uh, at that particular time. So our pitch generally includes about convenience. That's always the first uh, connect. A lot of times the farmers are not able to uh, do a secondary business uh, because they were constrained that. You know, fasal laga di hai, abhi kharaab ho So uh, they want to uh, uh, do something, and be, but they are constrained that they have to go and operate the balls. So uh, that's where our uh, system comes into picture. And they, so in, uh, I think I remember my first pilot that I had done. Uh, I had gone back, you know, because I always talk about how much water we save, how much electricity we save, etc. But when I asked the farmer, uh, you know, we, we were able to save a lot of water and it uh, might have also helped improve, improve the yield. So, uh, you know, this is all expected. But what was more important for me that I was able to save 50% of my time because I generally in the mornings, I have to go uh, to you know to the market to sell uh, my produce and at that time I cannot actually irrigate and if I start irrigating at that time I will come back in the evening so it will be over irrigating and if I do not it, it will be under irrigating and uh, uh, even when I am not going to the market I am sometimes when I turn on the pump and I uh, say I, I have to do it for one hour 
but when i go uh, into another farm do some activities and get back it might be 2 3 hours so uh, and if 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 a farmer put a, a smart watch in his hand uh, walking on the farms only a 5 10 acre farmer uh, uh, would actually uh, take about more than 10000 20000 steps uh, to actually just to manage the walls so that's their uh, first pain point that is addressed thanks as you for bringing the perspective of uh, farmers which are your primary uh, users customers uh, i want to ask rajesh now uh, because you are working with farmers trying to move them to natural uh, farming right how much of discussion regarding climate and sustainability uh, uh, comes in when you're trying to uh, have this discussion with farmers yeah uh, very interesting question um, it starts uh, with talking about climate and sustainability so we may we go to farmers and we ask them ki what were your forefathers doing what kind of crops they were growing um, and primarily most of them they would say ki you know some Uh, some sort of millet in grains, uh, different sort of vegetables, uh, even buns were uh, fulfilled with different kind of trees. And then we ask you what what is the change that you are seeing right now in your field to what you have experienced in your past when your fathers were doing this. And then the farmer would say, you know, uh, problems like um, water. Water is not available. Water does not come on time. um the rice takes so much water and then they would talk about ki different kind of inputs we do not know what quantity uh, what mix how to bring them where to sell the produce even if the produce is you know uh, in a bumper season because then with the market glut happens and starting from the climate and sustainability the farmer realizes the farmer has already uh, you know imbibed uh, the sense of care towards the soil towards the nature towards water that comes to the ground and they they do not uh, they do not put it into exactly articulate words like climate and sustainability but you can actually sense what it means for them what their water means for them what their soil and degradation means for them because they matlab they get emotional while talking about all this stuff thanks rajesh for bringing the farmers uh, perspective uh, she wasn't i think your focus if i understand correctly your primarily b2b uh, uh, right uh, how do you talk about sustainability and what do you hear from your customers when you're pitching them uh, or do you at all pitch uh, uh, this to them absolutely maybe about a year ago we were not uh, pitching um, the reason i would say is we we never knew that we were going to uh, we were solving uh, one of the uh, one of one of their key challenges around sustainability we've also realized we've learned along the way um, what makes it easier when it comes to uh, working with a b2b customer is a lot of consciousness is already there amongst the customer when we talk when we go and talk to nestle about regenerative agriculture or ulam about awd or uh, uh, awd practices for uh, uh, carbon sequestration or uh, uh, sustainable agriculture in general or to a vnv advisory which is uh, uh, working with us on a very 3 or 4 lakh hectares of paddy cultivation to sequester carbon so they already understand it they uh, most of the corporate clients that we've seen have come to us with a very clear need for digitally measuring the activities Uh, that are done on the uh, field to substantiate their uh, sustainability claims so invariably our pitch always has that um, originally when we were just talking about food traceability corporates are still uh, they, they understand but everyone grapples with the with uh, the question of how am i going to monetize this how am i going to monetize my investment on a traceability platform right not all organizations will be able to do but that was their question but now uh, because it is um, anything around sustainability goals are cfo's goals uh, goals are chief sustainability officers goals uh, they understand it and we talk about it and we do several such projects including regenerative agriculture agroforestry uh, uh, projects and uh, uh, you know awd projects with many of them we've we've also seen a lot of uh, organizations uh, in india talking about uh, carbon accounting as well uh, that's both of them uh, we see uh, and we pitch yeah hope that answers your question uh, thank uh, thanks let, let me sorry to sorry let me quickly add to it so we added a custo customer perspe perspective but speaking of b2b 
It's interesting to see in the last two to three years, and specifically what has happened in COP27 or G20, the recent G20, industries, more often the FMCG players, have understood that they need to shift towards lesser car carbon emissions. And they have started realizing this pattern. And they are trying, so when you talked about are the customers paying, but the FMCG players are ready to take hold of that situation and give the right product. So it is not because they are more sustainable, they are trying to resolve this problem, but they are being pulled by the authorities, all the policy makers to bring the right uh, framework in place. So I just need 30 seconds on that point because I think sure. eventually um, the initiatives that the corporates take eventually connects uh, to consumer, right? All of us are consumers, uh, all, all uh, organizations are serving to consumers in some way or the other. So very interesting point um, uh, he mentioned about is how, d how do you communicate this to the consumer? So consumers like us are very, very selfish. If you go tell them that here is the greatest uh, idea to reduce 1.5 degree uh, uh, temperature rise, they'll say, how do I care? Uh, if I'm sitting in my AC with 24 degrees centigrade, that's fine for me, right? But then if you put it in a way that that is from their perspective, how does it benefit them, not not the larger, uh, other ecosystem? I think they will probably uh, be able to latch on to this uh, idea. And that's exactly where uh, uh, helping consumers verify the claims that organizations make become very uh, critical. Uh, and, and by the way, the just connecting back to what we do, we run a blockchain network to uh, uh, verify, build a verifiable data uh, set on a, on a platform. That's uh, uh, how. So, uh, you know, like I talked about, uh, you know, farmers in general, like when they are our consumers. Uh, but, you know, uh, we had interacted with a farmer, uh, uh, you know, like a farmer producer company, there is a uh, cooperative, okay, and they were doing uh, group farming together uh, for, manage for managing their irrigation, they were getting some uh, water from, you know, lifted from river. And uh, uh, 50 farmers for 250 acres land, and uh, they were incurring, because in general for individual farmers, sometimes the electricity is waived off, the bills are waived off. But they, they had to pay because it's a cooperative. So they were incurring about 15 lakhs of uh, uh, rupees of annual electricity bill. So uh, with our system, now it's in the pilot stage, but they have realized that if it, if, it, if it can cut down to a lot, you know, they are estimating about their electricity bill will go till 5 lakhs. So unless it pinches them with something, uh, they are not going to adopt to any climate sustainable practices. Thank you, thank you. So, <coughs> you know, th this is very nicely uh, uh, summarized by Jasveer, Shivats and Siddharth. And this is a message uh, uh, I want uh, early stage uh, uh, startups and ideas to take, uh, right? We might be contributing uh, to sustainability climate, but think about your consumer and where their incentives are uh, aligned and modify uh, uh, their uh, uh, pitch, right? Uh, 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 unfortunately, we are still uh, at a time where uh, PASA is much, much ahead than climate. Uh, uh, it's slowly changing, as Yosin talked about, corporates due to their regulations uh, and incentives alignment, uh, things are changing, but we're still, uh, uh, you know, uh, PASA first, where their incentives are, uh, we need to align uh, our pitch. Thank you uh, a lot. Moving to the next uh, uh, part, uh, in terms of I want to talk about, on the, I want to stay on that PASA note and talk about capital uh, a bit, uh, because many early stage startups are there. I want to uh, 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 begin from uh, uh, Srivatsa this time and understand uh, in your fundraising uh, journey, right? Uh, what are you know? What is one good thing that you did, and what is something you repent uh, doing? One each uh, uh, thing I would like to want to hear. I think good good thing that we did is we raised money. <laughs> um, uh, I what I would repent is we should have uh, raised slightly more money, <laughs> larger <laughs> money. But anyway, uh, uh, kidding. Yeah. So yeah, um, uh, one of the good things that we did was we we went uh, with uh, uh, investors that actually are very very passionate about the problem that we're solving. Right, they, they, they understand uh, the very deeply what uh, one is just understanding at a peripheral level, the other one is understanding at a very deep level. So we have been backed by uh, some of them, both uh, um, at our early stage fundraise and, and our pre-series say that we did uh, in April and now looking to do uh, some more now. Uh, I think um, very practically, if I were to say, uh, 
what is not so great thing that we did is approach the market slightly later in the sense that, I mean, especially given the investment scenario right now, you'll have to uh, have minimum six to eight months uh, um, of time frame before you can go out and raise money. Uh, though there's a lot of capital available uh, investors, a lot of them out sitting here have become quite conscious about investing and, and right investments are coming in the right organizations. I'm not saying no to it. But then I think it's taking a little more uh, longer time than what it used to take. So my suggestion, if everyone, anyone's raising, uh, uh, don't wait for your last four months, six months raise uh, yeah, earlier to that. Yeah, yeah thank, thanks. Yuvat. So the, uh, as an investor perspective, the right time to raise money is when you already have that, right? That's, that's true for every uh, uh, kind of uh, capital. Uh, and that's a fact, uh, uh, right? So I want to move to Siddharth uh, uh, and ask the same question. Uh, one good thing that you did and one thing you repent uh, uh, doing. The thing that I repent most is that we did not make the right team at the right time to pitch to the investors. So we understood it gradually. And uh, the reason I speak of this is 90% uh, of my team currently is pure, are pure researchers by blood. And uh, because of that, we were unable to make the right uh, noise or the right understanding to our potential investors. But the good thing that happened out of this was that we spoke to, I think, more than 300 plus investors till date. And that has given um, us a much better perspective of how the globe thinks about investments, how the true investor who is actually willing to stay with you for a longer run wants, to, uh, wants you to guy. So for us, an investor ultimately is not a person who is giving us the fund. For us, an investor is a person who is guiding us or hand-holding us to achieve the mission that we have put forth. So this is what has the journey been till date. Yeah, thanks, Dutt. I want to move to Jasveer. Uh, uh, I, I know that you've not raised a commercial external round, but you have raised, uh, you partnered with incubators, grants. Uh, how has the journey been? And especially for early stage startups here, any suggestions uh, uh, in the initial two uh, uh, or three years uh, of their fundraising uh, journey and how to structure that? Sure. Uh, I think, uh, so I will start with what I repent is, uh, you know, I was uh, early, so uh, we were uh, in an idea stage in 2015-16, okay, and we registered in 17, became full-time in the startup, but, uh, and I know because, you know, I do not come from a family, I, I uh, directly from college, out of college, I uh, uh, started, jumped onto this, uh, parallelly working on uh, a job as an assistant professor in uh, Pune. Uh, so, uh, and that was not funding anything, but uh, it, it helped me with the R&D facility without actually, you know, setting things up for my own, uh, especially for uh, hardware in intensive startups. Uh, that's one uh, very important thing to be associated with some kind of a lab. And uh, I was uh, trying to jump into uh, fundraising because there were uh, no funds and we need a lot and if we need to go fast, you need it. So, uh, but I, uh, uh, in a hard way, I realized that, you know, in India, uh, you uh, will get funded, and especially when it's the winter season of funding going on. So you're not going to get funded easily. Uh, so, and you will get funded only if you have good traction and VCs will only come in, I mean, for a hardware company like us would come in probably after we have 50 or 100 uh, enough customers in hand for it. So, uh, but later I uh, realized that there are grants available. So in 17-18, uh, uh, I was able to get into the Nidhi Prayas, the prototyping grants. Obviously, uh, the, the pitching needs to be right for the kind of grant offerings that are there. So that was a prototyping uh, grant. Uh, then we were fortunate to get after that the uh, big grant, which is the Department of Biotechnologies, uh, which, which was about 50 lakh rupees. Uh, it, it helped us uh, uh, go faster a bit. Uh, but again, you know, another mistake that I uh, did, you know, sharing for the early stage entrepreneurs that uh, we were going, we were going with a very, you know, uh, mindset of are hum fresher ko leke bhi kaam chala lenge. So uh, we spent a, a little more time in building our product, which we, we could have avoided. Uh, you know, trying to row on a uh, more like on a survival mode than a striving mode. So uh, yeah, and then we also were able to partner. So now uh, uh, I have, you know, if, if I have to get, go for a grant or for 
you know incubator it's very strategic you know we do not apply ki everywhere where, wherever there is an application open we would, we would apply we would uh, strategize it so uh, for example we are associated with uh, aic uh, rmp which is rambau mohalgi prabodhini uh, which helps us connect us with the government uh, uh, you know side if we have want to have government uh, a, as a facilitator or maybe as a uh, customer uh, and uh, we are connected with uh, desh pande foundation in hubli where uh, uh, we we need help with the already they have a facility for electronics some development to a, to a little uh, towards the batch production side so we are able to seek that help from them then we have a venture center in pune we, who is able to help us out with the grants we also you know got a uh, you know for some survival small csr grants are sometimes also available which uh, sponsor you for uh, some on field application wherein a small impact can be shown uh, it helps us reach that you know pilots and validation stage uh, stages at the early stage to move on to the uh, stage where we can uh, enter and uh, uh, you know generate revenue so we have reached that stage of generating revenue and uh, our next stage is you know getting some vc funds <coughs> thanks everyone uh, for that so i want to summarize this uh, funding uh, uh, part right and common things which i heard uh, was it has to be strategic uh, uh, right if just because someone is offering uh, money uh, do you take it maybe no uh, i heard this from uh, shri otsa as well uh, i heard this from jasveer as well even at early stage the kind of grants they are going to reach out uh, to uh, just see if there is any other value add and is it in aligned with their mission uh, also that very important uh, thing and as i was mentioning earlier uh, shri otsa pointed it towards raise more than uh, uh, what you need and basically the right time to raise funds as i mentioned is when you already have it uh, right Uh, and if that's the path you're going to take some businesses don't need too much capital uh, which are the i mean in my view best businesses uh, right if you can build such uh, businesses that's great other thing which i uh, uh, heard again from siddharth and jasveer is the team uh, you just cannot see it as a uh, one person army uh, right uh, anybody who is going to be investing their money uh, is going to look at uh, the supporters uh, you have do you have a co-founder do you have a team with respective skills already there uh, right unless it is a family friend or a fool uh, as we call it uh, 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 nobody is going to invest uh, in a person uh, uh, directly uh, right that's uh, uh, one any anything anything else that i uh, missed out uh, siddharth i see you holding my i will i will quickly add to that is uh, to the budding uh, entrepreneurs don't uh, pull yourself down if someone says no to you because uh, if someone is saying no to you and some other person is ready to say yes to you and parallelly uh, there is ample amount of fund in the market there is no limitation if you come out in the market there is no limitation with respect to the fund that is available we are not right or apt to get the right person in our city so you need to understand as uh, said you need to understand with whom you are approaching what you are talking but at the same same time project your team not you as an individual yourself because it will be ultimately your team that will help you achieve whatever you are as of now so yeah yeah no thank thanks uh, yeah uh, i think one quick point i want to add here is that you know we could have actually entered into the market earlier with a very smaller version of the product that we have built so uh, do not try to uh, perfect or or find a smaller find a uh, you know technologically sm shorter version of your product which can also fit as a use case which you know which a customer may be ready to adopt you know may may not have a very a big uh, story around you know like sustainability or or a bigger uh, story around it but something which you can at least start generating revenue and you have the same customer to look out for when you actually have the real product the visionary product that you were going to build so that will get you going thanks as we so yeah Uh, don't look out for perfection if your mvp is reading uh, start approaching the right people uh, right and i want to you know and on a last question i want to learn about one failure or biggest challenge that you couldn't solve uh, but before that i wanted to add one point to siddharth very important uh, many funds that you will be uh, approaching except family funds remember they are money managers it's not their own uh, uh, money 
that's why their focus uh, is very important because it's not being driven from an individual uh, uh, right uh, uh, no except family offices nobody else is investing from their own pockets so maybe study them and uh, then approach uh, uh, would be one suggestion uh, i have uh, as uh, most of the vc funds are managing uh, uh, money who someone has given them and told them to invest in x y z uh, sectors right uh, that's one last uh, uh, suggestion uh, okay so uh, let me start from sujesh uh, because you work with uh, uh, farmers on ground uh, any challenge that you faced uh, that you not been able to solve uh, uh, i know it's early days for you at uh, cgm as a platform but any challenge in terms of natural farming uh, uh, that you're not able to solve well uh, speaking with respect to cgm because cgm is a sort of multimodal marketplace where you're connecting business to business uh, business of agricultural extension of natural farming to the business of right people who want to invest in climate financing so net zero and green washing were the big terms of this cop and um, uh, from from the other end of the perspective not from the farmers end what has been actually challenging is most of the stakeholders that i am involved with want a due diligence process on the person who is giving out the finances ki are they using the offsets specifically for green washing and given the you know businesses and how they perform in the market and what kind of uh, information is out there about them and what kind of information they hold within it's very hard uh, for someone who is giving you money to ask them to uh, go through a due diligence process but slowly people have been changing people have been realizing if you want a good quality uh, you know offset from the ground from from real projects on the ground you need to you know get get into the groove of the other party too so they are they are giving out information slowly but that has been the biggest challenge that cgm is facing right now thanks thanks uh, suggest green washing is i think globally a challenge that you are seeing it on the ground as well uh, siddharth uh, one of the challenges or failures that you are still uh, struggling uh, with i would not say we are struggling as an entrepreneur we are always struggling so be it funds or be it mvp Uh, but uh, the major challenge that we understood in the in our journey till date is that we were unable to decide our ta- target audience in the initial years it took us 2 years to understand whether we should go b2b or b2c and if you are talking b2c is it actually b2c or is it b2b so one 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 has to understand what is what his or her target audience are then only the pitch becomes right enough for the investor to put money in yeah understood very important at early stage often we are lost in our own ideas and we think it's the best Uh, we have to think from customers' uh, uh, perspective. Uh, Jasveer and next three words. Uh, I think the most challenging in uh, when farmers are the customers is to take the money out of farmers' pocket. So I mean, of course, that's one struggle. But we have, you know, we have uh, trying to work around like they generally have the dealer distributor network which can extract, which is local. so uh, but we cannot bypass it i mean we we talk about in agriculture you know, no removing the middleman with it but it's 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 difficult to do that in this market uh, that's one challenge and uh, other is you know trying to sell the sustainability s- story while it has uh, we we are able to tell them a lot of benefits of it but still the adoption rate is going to take a lot of time so uh, you know it's kind of delayed by at least 3 4 years so that's one of the biggest challenges mm-hmm. although we are having you know uh, uh, you know to create uh, uh, instead of a ramp r- create a ramp instead of a step up uh, you know with the other uh, methods in which i talked about you know bringing automation to a mobile phone rather than talking about sensor based automation things like that we are trying to work around but th- these are all work arounds right And, and farmers are the most shrewd people. We might read news and might lead to believe otherwise. It's very difficult to take a single rupee out of uh, uh, farmers. It's easier to take out of consumers. Uh, sure. Closing thoughts on any challenge or failure? Uh, uh, I'll just extend uh, on on uh, the farmer piece, right? Especially when we talk about uh, agriculture in India, we we are full of small and marginal farmers. You cannot exclude them from whatever we are building. 
Uh, building tech is not a big problem. We all have been doing that uh, for our living. Uh, but then operationalizing technology in agriculture is the biggest problem, right? I'm still talking about operationalizing technology at the grassroots level, where you have to have the, the farmer that holds 1.5 acre land uh, to be inclusive in your digital initiative. That continues to be very hardest for every player in, in uh, uh, India. Um, and probably a challenge for all of us to solve as well. We, we continue to be innovative there. You build offline client, you, you build multilingual uh, clients, and you build agronomy advisory to client, you build satellite image, all of that stuff. But then um, only one question that farmer constantly asks is, how is this going to help me to sell my produce more? And you have to somewhere be able to connect this. So I, uh, just 30 seconds I'll take and uh, give an example. Last week, I was in Kadri uh, with the um, Rainforest Alliance and Nestle uh, doing a survey of the regenerative agriculture project that we are starting. The farmers that came in there care two hoots about anything that is getting done. They're saying, is Nestle going to buy my produce? And I will do everything possible. Are you going to give me some amount of money to put my fencing around my farm? And once the produce comes out, are you going to buy my produce? If the answers for these two are yes, then they will do anything. I mean, the farmers will never say no to uh, things that you want them to do, but we have to create a very clear value proposition uh, for them. And that, I think, is always a moving target. You have to be very, very innovative in building that. And we, we go through that challenge day in, day out. Uh, we come up with uh, solutions every uh, now and then, but it continues to evolve. Yeah, thanks. No, that's a fantastic takeaway. Be it uh, food tech where Siddharth uh, is you know, in lab-grown uh, uh, meat, or be it uh, uh, agri-tech uh, where other three panelists are in, uh, customers or farmers generally don't care about your tech. Uh, they'll in in foods case they'll talk about taste and texture. Uh, as you just mentioned in farmers case, uh, what am I getting out of it? Uh, so, agri tech you have to be agri first and tech uh, later. It is proven in the Indian agri tech ecosystem as well. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, lovely interacting uh, with you all, and hope you got some takeaways. Uh, thank you.